Welcome into Investors Club. I'm Joseph Springer. I got a great show for you. We just had some terrific, had a terrific interview with Hilary Metz, whose father is in the Cassava Sciences Somifilam study. Make sure I'm on camera here. Cassava Sciences Somifilam study in the open label study. So we know he's on the drug. She came and spoke with us in um, Metz, whose father is in the Cassava Sciences Somifilam study. In the open label study, so we know he's on the drug. She came and spoke with us in um I had the thing open in the Discord. I was I, I always go through and close the uh, make sure the window is closed. I had it open in the Discord. Come back. We got the new set, got a lot of new te technical problems, new technical problems, but had a great interview. And uh, speaking of which, uh, we have, because we had uh, some, some glitches with sound with uh, Dr. Milton Werner, I edited that up and made it a little bit better. I'm gonna edit it up. I've got a six minute interview we're gonna look through for Hillary here. We're gonna do the same thing with, uh, with, Dr., uh, with Dr. Milton Werner. And I'll, I can fix the, uh, the, the audio a little bit more. I figured out how as well. So, but because that audio was only okay, this audio was good. So let's check this out. So I had a great interview with, uh, with, 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 with we'll just take it, we'll take it a, a little piece at a time here. And... He's doing really good, but I mean, considering he still has Alzheimer's, it's not a cure for Alzheimer's, but um, comparatively to where I think he probably would have been at this point had he not had it, given how fast he was deteriorating in 2021. Um, He's, he drives, although I still don't want him to drive as far as he sometimes does. He's doing all the daily things that he used to do. He can be self-sufficient. He can take care of himself. He has good days and bad days, but for the most part, I mean, I, I think I said this in January, if this, if this drug keeps the status quo where it is right now, it's, it'd be amazing because, you know, I'm in all these Alzheimer's support groups and I read the things that people are saying about trying to take care of their, you know, parents or loved ones and it's, it's terrible. It's crazy. I mean, I, I would equate it to trying to take care of a newborn baby except you know, a full grown adult who's walking around and, you know, it's just, ugh, I just hope it never gets to that point. Mm -hmm. And the appointment before that, they drove. So between January and now, they've driven down here one time. And right now they're in Massachusetts and they drove there. So, so when we, uh, on January 17th, uh, Hillary came and spoke with us. Uh, her father had stopped driving around his hometown because of, he was on, because of Alzheimer's disease. He went on the Samifalam study in September of last year. By November, he was getting better and started driving around again, came to see her between November and January 17th, drove from North Carolina to Florida to see her. And now she said he, uh, he just he drove down again, down and back again. And now he just drove them up to Massachusetts. I just hope it never gets to that point. Mm -hmm. And the appointment before that, they drove. They seem to get even better or maybe worse for state the same. <laughs> Last part. Come on. He seemed to get even better or maybe worse. Or I'm not going to stop it again because I'm afraid I, the audio is going to go out. He's been about the same since, since January. I think he's probably been about the same through the whole process since about, I'd say, probably around November. I think he's been about the same. There's times that my mom and my sister will tell me things like, oh, they think he's getting worse and they'll give me examples, but then I'll call him and check on him and talk with him for 30 minutes yeah. without even a blink of an eye. And he has no problems, you know, getting all his words out and speaking. And then there are other days where I call him and he's like, I'm having a hard time talking today, you know? Um, but so I, I do think that sometimes he's getting, I don't know if I would say worse. I would just say maybe having a bad day in one area. And, but the last two times at the doctors, he improved on his memory test scores. My fear is that when he comes off the drug, if he, on his scores. that he declines so much in 
back on the drug, he can't ever get back to where he is right now. That's that's my biggest concern. I had a doctor call me last week who um, is a national Alzheimer's advocate and speaks at Alzheimer awareness conferences, and he was diagnosed himself with early onset Alzheimer's, and he's only, I want to say, early 60s, oh, no. and he called me because his doctors did not recommend going into the study because there was just no information, but, you know, it's his life and his health, so he called me, and I... You know, we spoke for about an hour, and I told him if you were my family member, you'd be in the study. And he said, "Yeah." I said, "There's been no adverse, you yeah. know, effects. Very There's important. been nothing negative, no um, side effects at all. That anyone else has even reported that we've seen." I said, "So what do you have to lose?" And he said, "Yeah, that's how I feel." And he's in—he happens to be in North Carolina as well, so hopefully he gets into a study there. It's a little disheartening to hear that he had to hear it from you, and someone like that was still not informed necessarily, uh, or we're still at. I mean, there's a lot of negative press out there, I think mainly from stockholders that care about shorting the stock and making money. Um, there's been articles in the New York Times with really crappy and unprofessional reporting. Um, I don't know if you saw the article that came out from the reporter who I happen to, there's a, a gentleman down here in Tampa who's a big supporter of cassava and he personally tried to get her to interview family members. He connected me with her and I reached out to her several times trying to speak with her before she published her article so she could hear from the families. She had no interest in an unbiased Unbelievable. She was completely biased and had no interest in hearing two sides of the story. She just wanted to publish what she was told to publish. And then I saw later how she went on social media and complained that family members were emailing her and telling her that she was a shitty person. And I was kind of like, well, that's what you get for doing a really crappy job and making the reporting profession, the journalism profession, hated because you're a perfect example of someone that's not doing your job correctly and can't even make an unbiased story. I mean, she could have printed everything she printed and then still printed, you know, two or three paragraphs of conversations and quotes from family members to just give two sides of the story. But instead, obviously, she was paid in the New York Times, didn't care, and just wanted to publish a story. I really do think people should write letters to the FDA. Now, I don't really know why so many people don't want to talk about it, but the other family members that I've spoken to, they, they said right now they want to remain private and they want to keep their loved ones private. I'm not really sure why. I, to me, it's not something to be embarrassed about. It's something to try to help so that other people aren't having to deal with these nightmares of this disease. Yeah. I know for my family, I feel like even even if even if the disease gets worse or if it gets worse some point down the road, I'm very I'm very confident that this drug has at least prolonged this period of time where he's doing better. Yeah. And you know, if all it can do is prolong and delay the disease from setting in, if it works for five years or eight years or ten years and then I don't know the, the floodgates break or something and he gets worse, okay, but at least we had yeah. the five or ten years before having to think about a care facility or, you know, something like that, because it was really already stressing my mom out back in August. He's doing different still as well as Alzheimer's. It's not a cure for Alzheimer's, but um, comparatively to where I think he probably would have been at this point had he not had it, given how fast he was deteriorating in 2000, 2021, um, he's, he drives, although I still don't want him to drive as far as he sometimes does. He's doing all the daily things that he used to do. He can be self-sufficient. All right, so... Some notes there, he has improved scores. So she said, overall, he's probably about the same since November, although his cognition scores have gone up twice. His cognition scores have gone up twice. We talked about the driving. How about that doctor, that national uh, Alzheimer's advocate who goes to Alzheimer's Association uh, meetings and, and whatnot and speaks about Alzheimer's disease, and he had to get it from her that this is a good drug and uh the, his own doctor tried to dissuade him uh doctors they're they get seemingly persuaded by big pharma it seems unbelievable there's no side effects as she points out there's been no hint of any safety or tolerability issues and it seems to work and the powers that be are still trying to dissuade people and they, they're they're taking the control of the narrative so much he had to hear it from her he himself and his own doctor, uh, the, 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 his own doctor and the general scuttlebutt is, is that, sorry, not proven. What? So Hillary speaks of, about the, the shorts. So uh, speaking of the scuttlebutt out there being a bunch of BS, we know it's the shorts. It's why we do Investors Club. That's why we speak to pillar, people like Hillary Metz to get the real information because the shorts control the financial media and the New York Times, though they control the whole media, when the media talks about finance, the New York Times. No attempt at anything except for complete bias 
as she said, as we knew. And then uh, other patients, family members are perhaps uh, not wanting to, uh, Dr. Baker had, had spoken before about these patients have their dignity. These are people that were prominent people in, in the case of people he knows. And they don't, they don't want to be looked at as people that are uh, compromised or something like that. But Hillary looks at it a different way. Well, I'm helping people here. And so uh, maybe we'll certainly invite Dr. Baker back on to, to get an update on the patients he knows. He knows three patients now. And so we'll invite him back on. But maybe we'll get, hopefully, uh, if we help, help spread the word about Hillary here, Hillary here, and uh, help, maybe we can get some more patients, family members on to speak with us. And with that, my investing friends, let's go to the phones. Got to reposition this stuff here. He can be self-sufficient. He can take care of himself. He has good days and bad days, but for the most part, I mean. Yeah, now the sound wants to work. <laughs> Come on. Still getting used to the new set, the new tech. Got to move this stuff. Getting frustrated. All right. Grr. All right, Peter. Peter. Congratulations, Joe, to your new format. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you very much for your good fight with Saba and your continued interview with Hillary Metz. Regards, Peter. Thank you very much, Peter, my friend. Great to see you again. Been a little while. Great to see you. And Peter, great to see you. It's been so long. As I understand the current situation with her father, the drug stabilized Alzheimer's disease and it doesn't get worse. It seems to be the case. It seems to be he went on in September. By, by November, they noticed that he was all the way improved where he is now and has seemed to stay there. When we spoke with her in January, he still had stuttering problems. And his, the problems he has now are usually, it seems, around speech. But his cognition scores got better and he's driving and talking on the phone and doing email and making coffee and all the stuff he wasn't doing before. So, yeah. So the drug stabilized and it doesn't get worse. That seems to be the case for Doc, for Mr. Metz so far. If that is true, Samiflam could help millions of people, absolutely. In addition, Savadex could help too. If you're not familiar with Savadex, that is the diagnostic candidate. One of the biggest problems, or one of the, another big problem with Alzheimer's disease is there's no good diagnosis for it. If you've got to basically take a good guess after you talk with the person, talk with the family members, look at biomarkers, do a brain scan. There's different things you can do, but you can't diagnose Alzheimer's disease with 100% accuracy until an autopsy. So, so there's this Cassava Sciences is working on a blood test, a quick blood test. You, you can do a spinal tap and it's a pretty good test. You can compare different biomarkers, ratios, pretty good test for Alzheimer's, but a spinal tap is invasive and painful. Uh, so this is an, an expensive, uh, this is a blood test, a simple, cheap blood test that if they, that uh, could be very big news, could be very big news. Miles, love your new format, Joe. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. Yeah, I've, I've got, I got to get, get some of the kinks worked out, but I like the new format too. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a pleasure to see your show. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it. When Saba passes phase three, I will need that dividend portfolio. That's going to be, that, it's going to be, it's going to happen all at once. I know that it's, it's, everything's going to come back at once, but that'll be beautiful. Yeah. The, uh, the, the, the growth stocks can take off and you can diversify into some income and that'll be great. Rainer. Hi, Joe. Also, I saw something on LinkedIn. I just randomly saw something on LinkedIn that somebody posted a reaction to somebody made a video, how women can be more attractive to men. And then somebody posted a reaction. They didn't like that video very much. So I was thinking I would make a video how women can be more attractive to men, but have all the, all, all of them be like, number one is dividend stocks. Number two is small cap stocks. And then have people show up to be angry at my video, but then get sound investing advice. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But so Rainer, hi, Joe, your interview with Hillary reinforced my optimism. Yeah. Her father has been taking Samifalam since September. And he is not getting worse, although that should be the case with Alzheimer's disease. Fantastic. Yeah, it's progressive. So he should be, it's, it should be that if, if the drug was giving him a steady benefit, we should actually see him getting worse, including that steady benefit. But it seems that the benefit is growing over time. 
as the disease should be declining. He should be getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, so great point, Rainer. Great point. Uh, he, he, he's, he should be getting worse, but he's not. So, so great, great point. Yeah. And we've seen that in other uh, small molecules that target misfolded proteins. We've seen and other long-term studies. We, I, I did an article on that about a year ago, a year and a half ago. We went through and looked at all the long-term studies of other small molecules that target misfolded proteins, and they're over like two and a half year periods. Like the, the studies, they, that's like the longest the studies went was two years, two and a half years, and over thirty months, it was the benefit continued to get better for these small molecules that target misfolded proteins. So it's it's not out of the question, and it seems to be happening before our very eyes and happening with Mr. Metz. Thank goodness. Ryan Ward says, Sava, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, three exclamation points. Thank you for your generosity, Ryan. Rainer, Hillary's statements regarding the New York Times journalist shows how big our, op our opponents are and shows that Sava has probably found something big against al Alzheimer's disease. Yeah, if this was, if this was a non-cure, there's a lot of other companies, a lot of other companies going after Alzheimer's disease, and you don't see the New York Times writing about them. Uh, this is a threat. This is a great point. Again, Rainer, great point. The, this cassava's drug, Simifilam, is a threat to big pharma. They also want to get it cheaper. If they can't destroy it, they at least want to get it cheaper. And then there's the also Remember, there's four parties that have incentive to bring this drug down. One is Big Pharma. They are not going to profit from this little company, and it's going to eat into their ideas of how to treat the drug, how to treat the disease. Number two is the shorts that just want to make money however they can. Number three is the competitors that also want to uh, want to bring their drugs along. And in fact, in one like Protego's case, are, are like copying exactly. And then number four is the Alzheimer's industrial complex. There's, it's like a $200 billion industry now. We saw the Alzheimer's Association. They're not interested in helping people. They're interested in helping themselves. They become a colossus. And so there's four parties that have incentive to bring this drug down. Isn't that awful? Yes, it is. That's just so important. What Hillary, Hillary speaking out and us promoting it is very important. Very, what else can we do? I don't know. Rainer, main question is how can we spread the word as many doctors and some parts of the Alzheimer's disease community and media are unfortunately paid by big pharma? You took the words out of my mouth or I took the words out of your mouth or whatever. I couldn't agree more. My friend. Yeah. Brian, cancel culture from big pharma is no surprise. Really interesting observation. Yeah. That's really what it is. They're trying to cancel the drug, cancel culture from big pharma. Interesting stuff, interesting. Let me uh, change the lighting up here. Change the lighting up a little bit here. Alrighty, cancel culture from big pharma. And just go back so I can Get a little closer to the computer here. Cancel culture from Big Pharma is no surprise, but there must be so many others have been have benefited from Simifilam. We can expect to hear from a wider audience. When can we expect to hear from a wider audience of clinical trial participants? Well, I'll, I'll bring Dr. Baker, I'll invite Dr. Baker on uh, with uh, expediency. I'll invite him on today. And then uh, let's see if we can get other people from other family members of other trial other, from the open label. I'm not frankly sure how to find them, but hopefully they can find us if we talk about this enough. Robert Champy, you are the Champy. Uh, thanks for all your work, Joe. Thank you, Robert. We're very happy to have you back. Thanks, my friend. It's great to be back. We are the champions. <laughs> it's great to see you, my friend. Great name, great name. I can't believe I never, I never, I don't think I ever, I don't think I ever uh, played the champion name before. Heidi, hi Joe. Hello, Heidi. Joe, in your personal view, what's the holdup with the City University of New York? My guess is uh, they don't want to get the, in this 
sort of litigious day and age. They want to make sure they got everything uh, right. They, they, they want to make sure that they don't get, they don't make a mistake, I guess. They want to have their bases covered and they don't make any money for delivering early. It's not like they get, it's not like they get, it's not like this is a profit thing for them. So they, they have no real incentive to, uh, to come out with anything. Uh, you know, it's, it's not like they get paid and they, they no real incentive. It's a rush. So that's why, I mean, there, there's no reason why, and there is incentive to get it right, uh, and not, uh, not make a mess. So, so hopefully soon, Boot Camp 21. More importantly, Hillary said her father showed improvement in both cognitive tests. Would have liked would have liked to gotten more detail from Hillary on this info. Well, I think we heard about one of them last time because he he had he had taken one of the tests and he had done well and he, had, he it had made him happy. He was because it's a very I'm sure that getting Alzheimer's sounds scary and frustrating. Uh, and all sorts of things, uh, terrible, terrible. And, uh, and so he is to find out your, your cognition is improving. See, she, he talked, she talked about how, how happy it made him last time. And, you know, it, may, it would make me happy. So, uh, it's, it, it's, it'll be the a das cog. It, that's what it would have been. So it would have been a das cog twice and he improved twice. Great news. Great, great news. One last comment from Heidi, would not, would not, <laughs> would not the annual International Alzheimer's Disease Conference in August be the ideal place to get the word out about phase three so far? Yeah, AAIC in August. Now remember, they released nine month data at AAIC last year. <laughs> and that's when the shorting campaign started. That's when the attacks started. So you would think, but, uh, so yes, in general, and, and there's people that think that, uh, but they have not announced that. We'll see. We will see. Rainer, Joe, my wish would be an interview with Dr. Robinson part two. He's a really serious scientist and I value his opinion very much. I, on one hand, I agree. Uh, on the second hand, I'm not sure there's been much that's come out that he could talk about. And if there was more data that released or something that he could analyze for us or something like that. I'm not sure there's any been any developments that he could that have been anything new to talk about, but it, it, he, he is a very serious scientist and very lucky to have him on. And thank you, Dr. Robinson for coming on. Uh, but yeah, we can have him back on, of course, if he has anything else to say. Rainer, some people think the City University of New York investigation hasn't even started. Hopefully we'll get some new data from Sava. <sighs> That's uh, that would be a bummer. That would be a bummer. Maybe so. I mean, they, they don't, again, they don't have any incentive to be a big player. They don't, they don't really have, they have, they don't even have the incentive to get the truth out there so much as they have the incentive to not, uh, there's, there's people that don't want to speak up in favor of this drug because they don't want to get harassed. Uh, we, we know that the, the shorts, we know, we know the extents the shorts will go to. I don't, I don't need, we don't need to bring up the stuff that they've done. So, all right, my investing friends, great to see you. Thank you for all your great comments and questions. We will see you tomorrow. I didn't, didn't get around to doing the show yesterday. I, I just didn't get around to it. Edited up the videos and everything and uh, uh, just didn't get around to it. But we got the live show today. I'll edit, up, uh, I'll edit up Dr. Werner and work on the audio again and get that out. And we'll do, a, we'll do that one again tomorrow. Also got uh, dividend stuff coming. We're going to start with all the insurance stuff. Just had a comment that dividend stocks are a great way to pay taxes twice. So we're going to do a segment. Dividend stocks are a great way to not pay taxes as all, at all because there's pass-throughs and a pass-through in your IRA that you don't pay any taxes at all. So you avoid corporate taxes and you avoid personal income taxes. So plus there's... Uh, long-term capital gains if you are qualified dividends if you are doing that stuff Rainer update interview with Dr. Baker about the people in the trials he knows would be so great too so yeah I, I imagine he would come back on and he does have more information for us so I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll probably have him back on pretty soon I hope so that'll be great all right great to see you guys see you in the discord more looks yeah please like 
I didn't get around to saying like and subscribe. I got to get get back to the. I got to get got to get the the format. I've, I've got to didn't uh, one o'clock came quick. The, the time goes so fast. Wanted to have this more structured, but we're good. I will see you guys if not later today. I'll see you in the Discord, and then we'll do it again tomorrow. Uh, and we got a lot more stuff coming. See you soon. See you in the Discord. Have a great evening. See you in the Discord.